Hey, what's going on? In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to set up Home Assistant in a virtual machine on Andre. So let's get started. In the previous episode, I show how to set up Andre for the first time. So if you're new to Andre, definitely check out that video. You can find a link in the description below. So to install Home Assistant on Andre, you can set it up in two ways. You can install the Home Assistant core version on a Docker container or set up Home Assistant OS on a virtual machine. The core version doesn't come with a supervisor, so setting up different integrations and also updating Home Assistant would require more steps. So instead of the core version, we'll install the Home Assistant OS on a virtual machine. The OS version does come with the supervisor, allowing us to easily update Home Assistant and also installing add-ons. All right, the first thing that you need to do is download the Home Assistant image. So go to homeassistant.io forward slash installation forward slash alternatives and download the KVM image. Unzip the image and you then need to upload the file to the Andre server and save it in the domains folder. The folder needs to be accessible from a computer in your network. So open the Andre web interface, go to the shares tab and click on domains. Under SMB security settings, set the export to yes. You also want that only specific users can manage this folder. So set the security to secure. Then click on apply, go to the users tab and add a new user. After you have the new user created, go back to the domain settings and under SMB user access, make sure that the new user has read and write access. All right, to access that folder, Open the file explorer on your computer and go into network. Click on the refresh icon and the on -rate server should come up. If it doesn't, it's because SMB 1.0 is not enabled in Windows. So what you can do is on the search bar type backslash backslash the name for your on -rate server or the IP address and then press enter. When accessing the on -rate share folder for the first time, a pop-up comes up where you will need to enter the user credentials you created via on -rate. Click on the domains folder and create a new folder named home underscore assistant. Then the image that you downloaded from the home assistant website, save it in this folder. If you go back to the Onray web interface, go to the shares tab and open the domains folder, you will see the new home assistant folder created with the image file. Now that the image is uploaded to the Onray server, you can go ahead and set up the virtual machine that will run Home Assistant. The minimum resources required to run Home Assistant are two CPU cores, two gigabytes of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of storage. To start, you can definitely set it up to the minimum and later on allocate more resources to the VM if needed. I personally have been running the setup with the minimum resources required and I haven't seen the need to change it. To add a new virtual machine, go to the VMs tab click on add VM and select the Linux template. Set the name for the VM to home assistant. You also want to set the auto start to yes. So the virtual machine starts automatically anytime the on -rate server is rebooted. For the logical CPUs, select two of them. The initial memory set it to 2048 megabytes, which is two gigs. The BIOS makes sure that it's set to OVMF. Then we need to link the Home Assistant image file to the VM. So on the primary VDIS location, change it from auto to manual. Then click on the field next to it and select user domains home underscore assistant and select the QCOD2 image. The template also generates a MAC address for the virtual machine, which you can use in your router to assign a static IP address to Home Assistant. If you have USB devices connected to the server that you need to link to Home Assistant, for example, a ZigBee or a Z-Wave dongle, you can select them on their USB devices. And that's about it. All other settings can stay as default. Before we start the virtual machine, we want to change the default icon to the Home Assistant logo. To do that, we'll need to upload the Home Assistant PNG icon to the Andre server and save it in the same folder we added the Home Assistant QCOW2 image. So uncheck the option Start VM after creation and click on Create. Then download the Home Assistant image from the internet. You can find a link for the icon that I'm actually using for my Home Assistant in the description below. Then open the file explorer and access the Onray domains folder again. Go into the Home Assistant folder, create a new folder name icon and save the Home Assistant PNG image in there. 
go back to the Onray web interface, click on the virtual machine icon, and then click on edit. Now to set up the home assistant icon, change the editor from the form view to the XML view. Under metadata, you'll see the icon option. Remove the linux.png and leave the quotes. Then inside the quotes, if you set up everything the same way I did here, enter forward slash mnt forward slash user forward slash domains forward slash home underscore assistant forward slash icon forward slash home underscore assistant that png then click on update and the home assistant virtual machine now has the correct icon assigned with that done you can now click on the icon and start the vm to check the installation progress click on the home assistant vm icon again and then click on vnc remote this will open a new window showing home assistant being configured once the process finishes, you will see Welcome to Home Assistant. Now, on another tab, go to homeassistant.local colon 8123. If the configuration is still in progress, you will see the Preparing Home Assistant page. When that's done, the login screen comes up where you can set up your Home Assistant profile and continue with the initial setup. If you're new to Home Assistant, I do have a beginner's guide to follow along from this point on. You can find a link for that video in the description below. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video.